Hi guys, it's Monday the 12th. Yes. Um, this is the first day of my final week at AMR. I start my new position on Monday, next Monday, so yay. We'll see how much reading actually gets done after that, but I do have some reading updates. I do have a couple of reading updates. I did finish Fair Game by Patricia Briggs. Um, I'm giving this five out of five stars. I am obsessed with this world. Um, this one is about Anna and Charles, obviously. But they were asked to go to Boston to help solve a serial murder case with the FBI. Eh, was it a little predictable? Yes, but give me anything in this world and I'm gonna gobble it up. And I'm finally getting different sides. <sighs> Kinda wish I would have read these in the order I'm supposed to read them, where you're like, you're supposed to read this, Mercy, then you read this one, then you read this one, then you read this one. Kind of like Buffy and Angel. But I am so glad I read this. I feel like any book set in this universe is going to get an automatic five because it's a fun time. It does exactly what I wanted. And I can't see giving them anything less. That's like... Because, I don't know. Something about this world just sucks me in. And I would love to see this as a TV show. This or Mercy. Preferably Mercy. And then to do a spinoff with Alpha and Omega, I think, would be phenomenal. So. Yes. And last night, I did start the deal. I am only 28 pages in. Because when I finally started it, I was getting kind of tired and my head was hurting. So I really didn't get a lot of reading done, but I will be reading a little bit of this tonight. Um, I was trying to last night get to page 75. So I know I need to get to page one. 50 tonight, if I can, ooh, if I can get, hold on, okay, I'm gonna read, if I can get to page 158, I will be on track for the reading that I want to do with that, so that I can possibly finish that, so that I can start something else. Um, I am also sending back my computer, not the ones back here. Those are Sterling's. The ones in the bedroom are going back because they are AMRs. So for the time being, I will have an actual desk. So I'm thinking either this weekend or next weekend attempting a diamond painting. We'll see how I feel this weekend. But I thought it'd be cool to pop in headphones and diamond paint or color or something. Now that I'm actually going to have, like, a space to do it. So, yeah. So my reading plans this week are to... I know tomorrow I'm going to be listening to the Spanish... Love Deception, because it's going to be the longest audiobook for the week, and that is my 8 to 8 shift. My final 8 to 8 shift. My final 8 to 8 shift. Lord, you have no idea how excited I am. It's my final 8 to 8 shift. Ugh. Um, so, because I've owned it for a while... I want to read it, give it a try. If I don't like it, I can unhaul it. But I also know it's Alicia's, one of her all-time favorite books. So, and it's fake 
dating. So I should be good with it. Because um, I do love me some fake dating. So, um, yeah. That's all I've got for right now. I need to go cook dinner and eat a little. So, I'm going to go do that. So, I'll talk with y'all later. Also, I just realized, before I get up, welcome back to Reads Readers and your host, Clinton Reed Britton. I just realized I never did my opening. So, you'll get the first clip, then you'll get this. So, welcome? <laughs> Oh, I also didn't mention, I'm using this for uh, found family, because to me, wolf packs, to me, are more like a found family. Um, for rom-com Suenathon. And I think I'm using this one for school setting. If I remember correctly. Forgot to mention that, so. Now I'm going. Bye-bye. Hey guys, um, if I look like I've been crying, I have, but I'll explain it in a second. Um, today is Tuesday, the 13th, it's Galentine's Day, I worked my last 8 to 8 shift at AMR, um, also, The Crying, I just saw the trailer for next week's episode of NCIS. And it's the tribute episode to the actor who played Ducky, who recently passed away. And I just don't know if I am emotionally ready for that yet. But, okay. This is a book channel, not a TV show channel. Oh my god, guys. Okay. So. I got some reading updates. With the deal, I did read to pit chapter 15 last night. Um, I'm on page 130. I don't know if I'm going to get any more reading done tonight. It is nine something and dinner didn't work out the way we thought it would. So I'm having to make chicken sandwiches. So, yeah. But I am really in... I don't know if this is like a five star, but this is like a really good introduction to a series. Um, I don't really know if I like Garrett just yet. I feel like he needs his ass beat. Because he's such a dude bro. And I hate dude bros. Those dudes that are like, yo bro. Let's get some pussy, bro. I can't wait to get laid, my brother. I can't stand those type of men. Oh, and he infuriates me. But I'm really interested in how it's going to turn out. So, and I'm interested in the whole series, so we'll see. Um, And today, I would have finished Spanish Love Deception... But I had too many meetings today, and things happened, and I kept having to call people to be like, hey, I need help. Um, but I did make it to page 310 out of 473. So I have about 163-ish pages left to go. I am really enjoying the Spanish Love Deception um, at the beginning, I was kind of feeling about Aaron the way I was feeling about Garrett. But he's starting to actually redeem himself. It's called communication, motherfuckers. Ugh. But I'm starting to feel like I'm in my rom-com era. Um, and I've already decided that I do want to read her other two books... 
I definitely want to read The American Roommate Experiment. That is Rosie's book. And Rosie is Lena's best friend in this. And I'm really enjoying Elena's writing style. So I'm going to put her down along with Chloe Lee's and stuff. Of an author that I would like to check out. She only has two other books. So I think it'd be really cool if I could read all three of her books this year. And decide if she is an author I would like to continue with or not. While I'm in my rom-com era, might as well read some rom-coms. I feel like the beginning of this year is going to be a lot of romance. And not mad about it. This channel mainly is romance and thrillers these days. We said fantasy. Sprinkled in. And when it's fantasy, it's normally paranormal romance. Um... I don't know if I updated y'all yesterday, but I did read Fair Game by Patricia Briggs and loved it. Um, gave that five out of five stars. Um, yeah. I feel like I did talk about that yesterday, but I'm not 100%. But I am enjoying the two books I am reading. Both will get done this week. It's only Tuesday. Um, I may change up what I'm going to read this week, so I might finish this tomorrow and pick up probably one of my smaller audiobooks so that I can finish two books in a day and stay on track. But I've got to go check on the food because it's only in there for 10 minutes Then I need to flip for eight so I can make my sandwiches. I just wanted to give y'all a heads up that I'm really loving these. And I didn't realize how much that they were kind of similar. In the sense that both men are assholes. Aaron is redeeming himself. Let's hope Garrett can redeem himself. So I like the fact that I'm on chapter 15 here and chapter 19 here. We just started chapter 19, yes. I might read more of this tonight because I'm more inclined to want to finish this. If I can finish this before bed, cool. I don't see that happening. But yeah, if y'all have any more like rom-coms like these that I'm reading this week, I might just label this vlog the rom-com week. Only one this week I had I read that wasn't a rom com was Fair Game, so I like my illustrated covers rom coms. So if y'all got any that y'all want to see me read, comment them down below. I would love to maybe do like a challenge in April or something because I know next month is Mel Mel Romances. Which I might try to find some male male rom coms to do next month. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got, and I will check in with y'all later. Hi guys, Wednesday. Um, yes, we're back in this position. Cause do I film it anywhere else? No. Um, I don't have any updates on. The deal, I'm still on chapter 15. I told you I probably wouldn't touch it. Um, I did only finish The Spanish Love Deception today. I went to go try to do another book, but my brain couldn't comprehend things today. So, I just listened to music and some crazy shit. But yeah, I finished The Love Deception... Um, if you don't know what it's about, it's about a woman named Catalina, a.k.a. Lena, who makes a deal with a co-worker, Aaron, to fake date to her sister's wedding in Spain, and things happen. We know what fake dating is. Um, there's a lot more to that 
in this, but I really, really enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. I really want to get her other two books, especially the American Roommate Experiment, because that one's got Rosie from this. And then The Long Game, I think is the third one, is a soccer small town romance. So I cannot wait to read the other two later this year. And I'll be able to tell you guys which one's my favorite of hers. Um, but I'm giving this a solid four stars. I am using it for the fake dating trope for the swoon rom-com swoonathon. And I am really happy I read this. Thank you, Nikki, for unhauling it to my shelves. It, I know Nikki didn't really like it, which I could see why. But it worked for me. Which I love when a book... I love that about books. That one doesn't work for another and it becomes another's treasure. I'm so happy I read this. I will probably reread it. This is such a comfort... Like, world, I loved all of Catalina's family. Um, there was parts in this that were spoken purely in Spanish. And they didn't really explain what the Spanish meant. Kind of wish there was, like, a... Like, she would repeat it. Like, there was parts where she was repeating to Aaron what was being said. But then there was parts where it was just her and her family talking in Spanish. So I kind of wish there was a little bit more than that. Just why I didn't get a five star. I also only teared up. I didn't actually like cry. So it can't get a five star by that definition. And then it used my dreaded. Oh my God. It used the dreaded words. Oh, I want to feel you milk me, baby. You don't milk a man. You milk a cow. Or a goat. You milk you, something with udders. You don't milk a man. Oh, just, oh, it's just, oh. Hate that terminology. And do you women really like it when a man says something like that to y'all? Because to me, I feel like that would take me completely out of it. Ugh. If a guy is ever says that to me, if Sterling ever says that, I will bitch slap him and probably walk out of the room. It's like, nope, everything's shriveled up now. Okay, cool, we done. We finished. But that's all the updates I have for you guys. I'm still reading this. Absolutely loved this. Um, I'm actually making a wish list on Amazon of some rom-coms that are similar in the vein of stuff like this or like the Bromance Book Club or the Bergman Brothers. I'm looking for rom-coms in those kind of veins. I'm also looking for some more queer rom-coms. So please let me know what are some of y'all's favorite rom-coms that you think I should read. Um, I'm also including with rom-coms stuff like Pucking Around to me would be considered a rom-com in my eyes. So, like, yes, they have sat, like lots of sex and smut in it, but it's very much like a rom com like, scenarios, but then they get into some, like, real... I do like my rom-coms, and I like my real serious. So, just let me know what some of y'all's out-the-wall rom-com suggestions would be. I have a few ideas of maybe doing a rom-com vlog and trying out some of y'all's favorite rom-coms. I already have a few from the girls that I know they loved last year. Maybe one of the girls' all-time favorite book of last year may get read by a Miss Abby. That's all I'm going to say. 
You know who you are, bestie. You know who you are, my Michael Myers loving bestie. So you all know what book I'm talking about. I'm contemplating adding that to being on that list. But that's all I've got for this clip. I'm going to go change, go to the bathroom, and then get dinner started so that I can get the computer stuff together so that I can take that to work tomorrow. That is where I'm going to leave you guys, and I will talk with y'all when I have another update. Oh boy. I just packed up my work computer to take it back. Oh my god, I just clicked. Two more days left at AMR, Thursday and Friday. So technically two and a half days. Oh my god, I start Monday in the new position. Oh my god, guys. And then I'm gonna pick out a book for tomorrow. I don't know what to do. I'm losing my mind. And I'm watching After Midnight. It's a hilarious talk show, game show with comedians. It's fucking hilarious. But, oh my god. I cleared up my desk, so maybe this weekend I can either try one of those diamond paintings or I can color. Ooh, we shall do something. What was that? I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. Probably black fuzz from the computers. But yeah, I just wanted to click in and have my minor freak out. Because by the time y'all see this, I'll be already at CMR. I don't know how much reading is going to get done next week. So next week's vlog might not be that exciting. But I do plan on shopping. Because we get paid Tuesday. Ooh. We have these type of blankets throughout the house. I know we have a pink one, we have an orange one, and we have a green one. I'm ordering a yellow one for me, to be my personal one, and I may try to use it to take some Instagram photos, because I feel like that's gonna be the thing. And I don't know why I just went super gay, but I did. I'm gonna go and figure out what I should read for tomorrow, because I think some of my reading's about to go downhill this month. So, I'm gonna look at the bingo board and see what I need to get a bingo. And then we'll go from there. But, I'll talk with y'all later. Bye. See you guys, I can do this from any room. Let me find a spot though that I can that you guys. <laughs> I'm not at the bookshelf. I'm at my desk where I have no computer now except for my laptop. But I am still currently reading For Never and Always by Helena Greer. I'm on page 301. This will get finished tonight. I am really enjoying this. I do want to go on a little bit of a rant, though. Publishing. If you know that a book is about the side characters from another book, and then those characters are prominent in this, let us know, because this kind of spoils her other book for me, um, Seasons of Love. Because I thought this was a standalone and had nothing to do with Seasons of Love. When the best friends are the main characters of Seasons of Love. So just do better. It's my new pet peeve. And I've noticed rom-coms. Publishing does that with rom-coms a lot. I'm over it. But once I finish this... I will actually have gotten my first bingo. Because I'm using it for small town. So I'll have done a bingo. Oh. Um. I might use it also for second chance. 
because I don't think I'm going to get to the second chance. Oh, no. I have a different second chance book now. Never mind. We're going to use it for now just for Small Town. I could use it for Celebrity. I could use it for a couple of other things. But for now... I'm excited. Um. But yes, I am really enjoying this. I've actually cried quite a bit. Teared up quite a bit. Um, oh, I know in another vlog I did mention this, or I mentioned this somewhere. That I purchased this when I was with my friend Caitlin. And we just really wanted to know how it was queer and how he was queer. I'm going to let you know, for those who don't know because it doesn't say anywhere on the book, that he is a, he is demisexual. That is discussed in the book for demisexual representation and pansexual possibilities. I also want to let you all know that these books, her books are Jewish. I'm going to assume Helena might be Jewish, and I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But the characters in this are heavily, heavily Jewish. And there's, like, nothing on the cover that screams Jewish. And apparently with Seasons of Love, because this hotel called Kerrigan's used to be the Christmas destination run by Jews. This is so weird. They're now turning it into an all-around time of the year. I would love to visit there. So, I am so happy that I'm loving this. But yeah. I have a about 50-ish pages left. And right where I'm sitting, depending on how it ends, it's sitting at a five-star, guys. Also, <laughs> this is the first queer book I've read this month. Well, Pucking Wild has a queer characters in it, but this is legit the first queer book. It's not male, 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 female. Still queer. And it's shocking, this might be my second favorite book of the month. Yeah. This will be my second favorite book of the month so far. This might even make it to my tops of the year. Who knows? It'll probably make at least the tops of the first half of the year. So this is really cool. So I've decided on my reading goals. I am changing up a few things. And I think I'm taking Tal Bauer off the list just, I will be doing all of Megan Brandy, yes. But I've decided Elena Armas, the author of Spanish Love Deception, she has three of us. Then I want to read this year. I need to add Elena. And I'm going to add Helena Greer because I'm going to read Seasons of Love and then I'm going to read her new one when it comes out, which, by the way, the main character of the next one is the ex-girlfriend of the first one. So people, be warned, do not look up synopsis unless you want to be spoiled for something. Um, you know, but I'm adding them and potentially Chloe Lee 
as authors that I would like to complete their backlist and go forward with them. So I'm going to look at some of my other authors that have books like this, like Timothy Janowski. I would like to catch up with his work, stuff like that. Um, I'm also, like I've been saying, in my room come era. So I'm going to enjoy it and do some projects with the rom-coms while I'm wanting to gobble them up. So in the next couple of months, you might see some returning authors and some authors that I would like to try. And if I like, I like. If I don't, I don't. I know I would like to try Abby Jimenez. I would like to try, um, oh, Sarah Adams. There's a few, like, rom-com authors that are, like, staples that I would like to try. Um, there are a couple from Tessa Bailey I would like to try a there's a couple series by Tessa Bailey I would like to try. I did really enjoy her Fixer Up series um, with Talia Hibbert. I want to see if she has any more that are like this, that are kind of like the um, Chloe Brown series. Which, by the way, at the very beginning of this, the Karakins All Your Calendar, their book club is reading Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I instantly knew I was going to love this world. And I would like to visit Kerrigan's. Just saying. Um, but yeah, comment down below if y'all have any thoughts of what I could do to spice this up. Um, I still need to read a Kennedy Ryan at some point this month and the next month to try and Lucy score. But I am right now officially taking Tao Bauer off because I feel like I'm more in inclined for some rom-coms. I know he has a couple of rom-coms, so he may still get read, but I'm not going to worry about reading his entire backlist. Does that make sense, guys? Um, like, I do want to finish the Ashley Heron Blake series. Um, Allison Cochran has a few that I still need to read. Um, yeah. So I think that's gonna be really exciting. Um, I might make a list of some that I'm like just super excited for if I get to them this year. Awesome if not awesome. I'm not gonna put any pressure on myself for this rom-com project. I just wanna have some fun and see what happens, you know? If I'm enjoying something, I might as well dive head first. That's who I am. And I like this idea of these illustrated covers and stuff. So I like this idea of eventually when this room has the, the bookshelves that I need in here, it'd be really cool to have the really pretty colors of the rum comes all together. I think that would be really pretty. We shall see if that happens. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Like, I'm gonna go cook dinner. I don't know what we're gonna have. But um, I have one more day left at AMR and I'm so happy because today I was biting my lip all fucking day. Started off with getting screamed at by Garfield County for something I didn't do. And then the manager making it all seem like it's my fault. I just keep telling myself Monday I start upstairs and I won't have a problematic manager. You have no idea how fucking excited I am. Yep, that's all I'm gonna leave uh, with you guys with. Um, I guess to go cook, so I will check in with you guys later. I don't want to get off the couch. But I finished for never and always. And I'm crying. It was so cute.
weird. But I just, oh, queer characters. I love it. Um, also, part of y'all didn't know, there's a non-binary rabbi. A non-binary rabbi. Fuck yes. Non-binary rabbi. That was everything. Named Rabbi Ruth. I love it. Um, I got my first bingo. Woohoo! I got a bingo! For small town. I'll go over that more this weekend. But yeah, I will catch you guys <sighs> later. Hey guys, yes, we're back to the straighted spot. And today is Friday, the 16th, what should have been my last day at AMR, is not going to be my last day at AMR, because they pushed my transfer date to the 31st, 31st, to the, the 1st, to March 1st, so it's February that it doesn't have, it's been a day. So I didn't get a lot of reading done today, but I did start um, Paradise or Goodbye Paradise, which I'm on like chapter 16, I think. I haven't moved. I'm in the middle of chapter 15. I did not realize that they were going to escape a polygamous cult. So there's that. But I am really enjoying the romance. It's Serena Bowen. I'm going to love it anyways. But I did get my book of the month. And I have two other book or two other things to show you guys that my friend... Um, Melody gave us to add to our collection because she wanted them off of her shelf. But ugh. Ugh, I don't like the new way they do these. But the book I got was The Heartless Hunter. Oop. I got a bookmark that says, was it something I read? Cute. But I got The Heartless Hunter by Christina or Kristen Cicerelli. Her Deadliest Enemy or Her Greatest Love. To get this for $5, it is a book that I think Sterling's gonna like. It's Enemies to Lovers Doesn't Get More High Stakes Than a Witch and a Witch Hunter. Falling in Love, and Kristen Cicerelli's latest romantic fantasy. He's a really big fan of the, you see the artwork right there? They're right there. He's a really big fan of the Blood and Honey series by, not Blood and Honey, Serpent and Dove series by Shelby Mahurin, and that's what this gave me vibes of. So I thought it was one that I was interested in. It's a pretty cover. And I've been wanting to restart my book of the month. To get more thrillers. But this one just seemed perfect. Can we get to that? So, there was a book that went around all so many years ago on Book Talk called The Okanami. And Mel was one of the ones who got it. And then never really read it. Did she ever even open it? I don't think she ever opened it. Because 
It doesn't look like it's ever been opened. And if it has, maybe once. Oh, it has. I helped her film her very first TikTok of this. Oh, yeah. It's been read, too. Oh. Oh, all of that's right there. But she got... She gave us the Akanami. The beautiful black sprayed edges. And stuff. So, which it came with. She spent far too much. From our tomorrows are made of our yesterdays. This may or may not get read, but it'll just be sitting on our shelves for the gorgeousness. But it also came with the Akamami card. This on the back. And it came with a pronunciations and a dictionary. how to pronounce the names, and then how to, the definitions of a few words. So happy. I'm so happy to have this because this is one that I really wanted, but I couldn't afford at the time. This is only the prologue to this world. Oh, I'm going to have to look up to see if we can get any more in it, if there is any more. So I haven't heard anything about it since the TikToks went around. Definitions and the pronunciations are in the back of the book, but they made them available. Um, it's only 460 pages, so who knows? I might read it soon. Who knows? But it's so fucking gorgeous. So I'm going to put it back. And then Sterling can open it. And look at it if he so chooses. Yeah, I remember helping her film her first TikTok ever unboxing this. It ended up not really working for her. So she just thought it would make more sense as where the readers to have it. And then she also gifted us This book set for the Advent Calendar Twisted Tales. Granted, I'm going to have to reorganize the books. But these are the short stories that are in Um, the collection that we already own, but you have What If a Twisted Coloring Book, so there's a couple of coloring books, a Winter Spring Journal, um, Twisted 
Coloring. Royal Games of Chess. Which is... Is Robin Hood. We have an art book. Which is just fan art. Another what if if coloring. I'm gonna pull them all out and I'm gonna reorganize them. Um we have a snow white cast out. Um we have a summer Autumn Journal, a Twisted Coloring, another Twisted Coloring, um, Rattle the Stars, this is, I'm assuming, this is Treasure Planet, we have another What If Coloring Book. Um, we have Fates 3, a twisted tale novella, which is the, which is Merida's little brothers in from Brave. We have a twisted tales coloring book, another coloring book, another coloring book. Um, we have a quote book. And we have a journey home. This is Belle. And we have the last corner. We have Call It a Hunch, which is Hercules. Um, a tw the envelope, which is Anastasia from Cinderella. We have the Reluctant Prince, which is a Bambi. We have a dragon in the snow, which is a... Uh, Sword in the Stone. And then we have another coloring book. So I know all of these are in the short story collection. But it's really cool to have them like this. To me, that's really cool. And then all of these are the extra, like... Coloring books, quote books, journals. I think that's really freaking cool. So, I am going to go reorganize these. I put them all in like a certain order so that Starling can look at them. Um... I missed one, the secret exchange, which is a little mermaid. Make sure I didn't miss any of those. Weird that I missed number one, but like, look at the box. I wanted to get this just so that we could have the box with all the pretty art. But yeah, uh, that's all I've got for you guys. My haul. And then, yeah, I'm going to go finish this. And then read some more of the deal. Or I'm going to read more of the deal and then do that tomorrow. Who knows? 
But that's all I've got for you right now, so I will catch y'all later. Hi guys, it's Saturday. Um, I will tell you guys, I did finish Goodbye Paradise last night. Bald my eyes out. Listen. That is probably going to be in my top five of the year. That just broke my heart and I loved it. So what did I do? I immediately went into the next one. It's a duology. I'm only two or three chapters in, I think I'm three chapters in, I think. But I'm really enjoying it. And I am still reading The Deal. My goal for this weekend is to finish these two books. But, but I just decided my color schemes for uh, my book journal, for my binder. Why is it already almost about to die? I grabbed the charger. And then I'm gonna flip the camera over, guys, and I'm gonna show you the colors I decided for my reading, and I'm so happy. Kind of sad that I don't have a pink that's erasable right now. That would have been better to use than the purple, but hey, one time. So you guys know I have my bookbinder where I write them all down like this, and then I also put them in here so I can see them color-coded. Now, these are the colors I went with. Because I'm in a yellow era right now, I wanted that to be my five star. I was gonna use Sterling's new favorite color for six stars, but we don't have a pink. So these are the only 12 I have to work with right now. So six stars purple, five stars yellow, 4.5 is yellow orange, fours are red because it used to be Sterling's favorite color. And then red orange is for 3.5s. Threes are yellow green. 4.5 is green. Or not. Not a lot. Ooh. Hold on. Six, five, four point five, four, three point five, three, two point five is green, two is dark blue. 1.5 is light blue, and then if I give it one star, it gets a black, because I don't give those out that often. So what do y'all think? I give a lot of five stars out throughout the year, because I tend to know my reading taste these days. So, I thought yellow would be perfect, because I'm in my yellow era. And then purple, because it's complementary to yellow. Okay. So for the end of the year, the only ones that can qualify for the favorites lists are the yellows and the purples. Now, the purples, I'm hoping at the end of the year will be my tops of the tops. If not, some of the yellows may turn into purples throughout the year. But if it has a reread above it, it does not qualify at all. I don't qualify my rereads. Those I will talk about. Like of my favorite rereads that I've done this year. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. What do y'all think? I'm really digging how the yellow looks. And I'm really digging how the red is looking with the yellow too. Ugh. Also, if the book gets like a three or lower... They typically get unhauled in this house, unless it's a part of a series. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys. Y'all are always asking, like, the questions of why do, how do I organize? How do I not organize? Um, actually, let me go through an entire binder flip through, because I don't know if I've done that yet on this channel. Just so that y'all can see. One sec. So I don't know if I've actually done a binder flip through yet for this year. So this will be it. Um, 
Starting out over here, you have my Sony on because we're doing the rom com Sony thon. The bingo boards are all like right here, along with Melma Marches. And then I'm gonna have this sheet, which I'm gonna write down all the five stars that I feel like are going five stars and six stars that are the standouts for the year. Ignore this, that book got a lower rating now. So it no longer qualifies. But then you have all my goals. Then you have my 11 friends choose my 12, making sure I keep track of those. Then I have seven series I would like to attempt this year, hopefully finish. 24 and 24, my bob picks for the future, we're going to go past that. Then I have my buzzword, I did do... They're watching you for January. You just can't really see it. Um, Thrills and Chills. Swoony. Template. Kehlani's Bingo Board. Extras. And then it just goes into the colors and that. So that is the flip through. I just heard the oven beep. So I'm going to go get our lunch. Morning, guys. It is Sunday. I will do one more vlog clip later today to close out the vlog. But I just wanted to get on here and let y'all know. I did finish Hello Forever for Second Chance. Um, unfortunately, I'm giving this a three star. Um, after the amazingness of Goodbye Paradise being a six star and making me sob and is possibly going to be in my top five favorite books of the year, depending on if it holds up throughout the whole year. If not, it'll definitely be in my tops of the year. Um, I did like seeing the cameos of our boys from book one, but this one follows whole new characters, Axel and Cax, which, and it's sports romance, which has nothing to do with book one. I felt like book one, they should have, um, excuse me, in book one, there's a guy named Trey who's gay. I feel like book two should have followed Trey and his story and maybe meeting Jason in this. And then Jason introducing Axel and Cax's story as like book three. I think that would make a lot more sense. We don't even get to see Trey in this. Um, it kind of upset me. Trey was one of my favorite characters from book one. Um, and Axel moves into the apartment over the garage owned by the boys from the first one. That's their only connection. I don't, it's just not strong enough for me. Um, this felt like a, this is a really low three stars, almost a 2.5. Um, if I gave out 270. 2.75s, that's what this would be, but I don't, so it's like it's not a 2.5. It's not quite a 3, so it's a low 3. Um, yeah. I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I finished the duology. I still feel like this should have been, like, book 3 in the series, and had a different book in between the two. <laughs> If this would have followed some of the same emotional um, connections we got in book one, it could have been stronger. But I, 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 I've seen there's some people who absolutely love this one and hate the first one. So to each their own taste, just Cax and Axel are not for me. Per se. Um, and I am continuing into the deal today. I don't know. Last time I told you guys. I'm on page 154. And I'm living. 
And it wasn't until um, Dana made the connection yesterday. I think it was Dana. One of the girls made the connection on, not yesterday, on Friday, that I was reading L. Kennedy. And Serena Bowen, who have written some of my favorite books together. One of my favorite book series together. I didn't even notice I even did that. I just plowed through a duology. That was not on my TBR when I made the list. So I'm going to finish this. Hopefully this week, which I don't know how this week is going to go. Now that Friday was no longer my um, last day in AMR. I've got two more weeks with them. And I'll be training, so I don't know how my reading is going to go. But I'm hoping the three that I'm going to focus on this week is Still Beating, Butcher Blackbird, and Hoping Real. And I might start Stupid Cupid. As long as I finish those three... Stupid Cupid, um, Trouble at Brayshaw High, and Chamber of Secrets. That's all I finish this month. I will be okay with that. If I don't get to Best Men, and if I don't get to 10, and so it never happened... That is perfectly fine with me. If I don't get to long shot, that's perfectly fine with me. I at least want to give the reel a try. And Butcher and Blackbird and Still Beating are the three that I want to make sure I get to this week. Because Still Beating and Butcher and Blackbird are on my 12 to read in 12. Like 11 Friends Chose 12 Books list. And reel is... Uh, the Swoony Readers group book and we're doing this rom-com swoon -a So I'm hoping I at least get to those and finish the deal. I'm going to try to finish the deal if I can today. If not, I want to get through as much of this as I can so I can finish it tomorrow. Um, once I finish the deal, I'm going to start either Stupid Cupid or Chamber of Secrets. I might do Chamber of Secrets because it'll be a faster read for me because it's a reread and save Stupid Cupid for the next physical read. And then if I run out of physical reads and I have time, I will do Pucking Ever After Volume 2. The last ones that I have audiobooks for are... Still Beating, The Real, Butcher and Blackbird, and Trouble at Brayshaw High. As long as I can finish those four main audiobooks at some point, whether I'm listening to them too and from work, whether I come in here next weekend, and Color, and or Diamond Paint, or something, um, with an audiobook, That'll be good. So I will just catch it with you guys in the next clip. Sideways. Babe. I found you sideways. Ah, oh, shush. Just because you see a dog yet, that does not mean you can bark. I don't think he's enjoying this. If he throws up, you get to clean the mess. Say hi to the camera, Chimmy. We let loose. Don't mind me. I'm gonna pause this. I'm just listening to an ambiance and reading the deal, which I still need to read a little bit more. I think I'm gonna read for like an hour couple of hours and see how far I can get in but a couple of my friends are doing reading sprints but I don't know if I want to jump on like some fresh one 
I'm over here trying to find the perfect ambiance. Because it's so fucking quiet in here. I want like a rain one, but all the rain ones that I have found are like really heavy rain. I want like the light, like a little bit of light drizzle like, sound. I don't want that whole boom, 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 boom type of rain and I'm not really wanting some jazz music and I don't want crickets ooh okay this is what I was looking for guys guys like listen this is the type of rain I was looking for This is perfect. This is what I'm going to listen to while reading the deal. It seems fitting to listen to an ambiance during the rom-com spoonathon because the girls are ambiance listeners. This is what I'm going to do. Okay, bye. I am, I am currently on sprints with Drew on his channel and our friend Jeff having a blast while I'm finishing up the deal. I have like two pages. Just wanted to vlog real quick. And then I'll do my wrap up for this week's vlog. Hi guys. Also, I don't know why I haven't been filming from this area because that is the perfect way to hold out my phone. On a, a candle and a mug. Perfection. But I thought I'd go over what I read this week. Close out this vlog. Um. Um. Yeah. So. I don't remember if this first one was in this week or if it was last week. But I'm pretty sure I read it Monday. But I did finish Fair Game by Patricia Briggs, which I did for Found Family, the rom-com swinathon, and I gave this five out of five stars because this world doesn't... Yeah, I know that they are generic and they're kind of like formulaic, but this is one of my favorite cozy uh, paranormal universes. You can see... The Mercy Thompsons right there. And then the Alpha and Omegas are right there. So I'm really happy to continue on. Five out of five stars. Um, next, I read The Spanish Love Deception. Gave it four out of five stars. Absolutely loved it. Want to read Elena Arms' other two books. And the one that's coming out this year. And I will do a video on her when I do. I'll let you know which one's my favorite. Um, five out of five stars for, for never and always. This could potentially get a six star later on in the year. Perfection. And I want to read her other books. Because I just, I just love them so much. I just love this so much at Kerrigan's The Inn. I just would love to visit. This would be an amazing show. Next, I read a duology, first with Goodbye Paradise, followed up by Hello Forever. Hello Forever, I gave three stars, very low. If I could give a 2.75, I would. I was just bored, and it's not, the couple just didn't really interest me that much, and it just wasn't my thing, and I feel like this should have been the third book in a series with a book in between these two to connect them better. But I did give Goodbye Paradise six out of five stars. Um, this is in my top five favorite books so far of the year. I know it's only February, but I feel like this will last. I don't know if it's quite my favorite book of the year. Because Pucking Wild and No Exit and It are all, like, really up there. So, 
but loved it, cried my eyes out, emotional. I understand why this is on a lot of lists. Um, I will say trigger warnings, though, for this, for getting out of a polygamous cult. Just want to throw that out there. And then today I finished The Deal by L. Kennedy. And yes, did I read Serena Bowen and then read one of her best friends at the same time? Yes, the fuck I did. What? Are they the co-authors of one of my favorite hockey romances? Him? Yes, they are. Am I mad about it? No. I freaking loved this. I will be purchasing the rest of the series. I do not care. Um, love Garrett, love Hannah, and I cannot wait to read The Mistake. And I cannot wait to have them all on my shelf with the matching spines, with like the hockey jersey like look to it. <clears throat> but I finished one, two, three, four, five, six books this week. Oh, yeah. Found family. Um, fake dating. Small town. Friends to lovers. Second chance. School setting. I'm proud of myself. Ugh. I got a lot read. But that's all I've got for you guys. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. And if you're new, hit that subscribe. And until next time, kids, always remember to be fabulously yourself. See you guys in the next vlog. Bye.